All right, for more on this, let's speak to Amir Rashani, a geopolitical analyst focusing on Latin America at Clipper Data. He joins us now from Beirut. Amir, great to have you with us. How powerful is the opposition in Venezuela given the military uprising and this latest incident? Hello, thank you. Um, so the Venezuelan opposition is at a critical moment now. Uh, following the beginning of the new term of Nicolás Maduro. Uh, the government still holds control of the army, and this is something that the opposition uh, needs uh, in order to continue moving forward. Currently, uh, as you have mentioned, the government of Nicolás Maduro is not uh, being recognized by many countries. Um, and the opposition, for their part, have been had the support of South American countries, especially the president of the opposition-held National Assembly, Juan Guaido. Uh, so today's incident marks, let's say, a, a very interesting point for Venezuelan politics, especially considering that uh, last week the Venezuelan uh, opposition held National Assembly passed a bill uh, regarding uh, amnesty for those people, and here I'm going to use a quote, that uh, defend the Constitution, end quote. This is definitely aimed at... Uh, the military. That is one of the reasons why Maduro remains strong in the government. So as a way, the opposition is trying to uh, gain more trust within uh, the military forces. And uh, this incident that happened today occurs only one week after, which makes it very interesting for Venezuelan politics. Mm. Uh, is, it, is the opposition strong enough to take down the president? Does Maduro have enough power and perhaps loyalty to hold on to control here? Because it seems like this is a compounding issue at this point. Yeah. So um, the government still has the institutions, which if we're talking about turning a government is one of the most important things. And it still holds the military. Um, so as long as the opposition is not able to break the chains of the military, which, which is what they have been trying to do by passing that bill, uh, the government will remain strong. And how do you categorize what's happening in Venezuela right now? Where are things likely to go from here? Well, uh, that's very interesting because we are having now a time where the, neither the, oppo the opposition does not accept the government and vice versa. So uh, as far as it goes, the opposition is trying to asphyxiate uh, the Venezuelan government financially by trying to promote more sanctions, uh, while the government continues to uh, reject the opposition's national assembly. Um, and try to close the doors for uh, opposition uh, practices or opposition protests. Now, it, we're going to have on Wednesday a major protest. There's going to be a major protest in Caracas. And this could tell us a little bit more of, of, of what's going to go forward when it comes to the political decisions of the country. Meanwhile, financially, uh, Venezuela is going to, especially the government of Nicolás Maduro, is going to continue to face more obstacles as uh, Latin American countries uh, have imposed travel bans on government officials, um, making it even harder for government officials to negotiate deals with international partners, especially for those ones for companies like PDVSA, which relies on uh, international meetings and contract negotiations. So financially, the government is in a very complicated situation. Meanwhile, the opposition has been gaining track, uh, traction, I mean, not track. Uh, however, they still lack the inf infrastructure to run up the country and the military support. All right, Amir Roshani with uh, Clipper Data in Beirut. Appreciate you being with us.